The Universal God of Destruction tournament concludes as Son Goku unleashes his full power going one on one against the final remaining member on Team Universe 6, the strongest contender on Champa's team, the assassin known as Hit, as the two square up in their final moments in what was the most intensely fought battle of this tournament thus far, as Goku unleashes the Kaioken infused with his god form in hopes of defeating the assassin. Welcome Dragon Ball fans to my official Dragon Ball Super Episode 40 review and breakdown entitled The Conclusion at Last, who will prevail? Veil, Beerus, or Shampa leading into next week's episode of Dragon Ball Super Episode 41, and what an episode this was, guys. Everything was on the line. I literally had a boner and caught a nosebleed after watching this episode. Finally, someone with the necessary skill set to challenge a Super Saiyan Blue mixed with a Super Saiyan God Kao Ken ability adapted in the correct fashion. Hit was able to prove to Goku that, indeed, he was just as strong as everyone expected him to be, and then some. So, Goku was definitely struggling. Now, before I go any further into this review, a fair warning that this video will contain loads of spoilers so if you don't want to know anything if you don't want to know what happens simply fast forward in the video go watch the episode and come back and let's talk some Dragon Ball Super don't cry in the comments about being spoiled by the thumbnail uh, or any of that because nothing is being shown or said that you guys already don't know about so with that being said also guys now before I begin check out the link down in the description below if, in case you guys want to go on ahead and watch Dragon Ball Super for yourselves um, there is a link that I have there on, on where to watch Dragon Ball Super so check the comments of that video where people always post Post links and you guys can go on ahead and watch it for yourselves and now with that being said let's jump right into it now as of last week's episode episode 39 the entire dragon ball community was left speechless after goku had resurrected the once forgotten cow can ability infused that technique with his super saiyan god form and in any case he could have died i mean he had a 90 10 percent chance that he could have survived that adaptation but of course nevertheless uh the we ended off the episode with a giant cliffhanger with the ferocious god kamehameha wave uh being fired off at hit and it turns out that hit did not go through through the barrier after all and he was not knocked out after a lot of people had suggested that he was knocked out indeed hit survived and with that last week's episode caused an uproar over the outcome that resulted during the vegeta versus hit battle especially now after last week vegeta admitting that goku is always one step ahead it made a lot of people angry it pissed a lot of people off because people are saying once again goku had to surpass vegeta but nevertheless in terms of power hit continues to grow in strength in their battle and it turned out that in this episode hit brought the fight to goku now goku you know he let he let a lot of time pass by and Goku had fully figured out in a way that as he was fighting Hit, Hit kept getting stronger and Goku had fully figured out a way to counteract Hit's Tokitobashi technique or time leap ability, especially while using the Kaioken adapted into a Super Saiyan Blue form. But keep in mind, ever since he Hit powered up, um, Hit has also increased the speed and the timing on his time leap ability as well. But it certainly wasn't easy, especially knowing now that Hit was taking the battle to Goku much serious because in this episode, Hit actually was able to do what Goku did not expect and that was pretty much give the Kao Ken Super Saiyan Blue ability a definite test and of course with that we picked up the battle right where we left off with Goku's Kamehameha wave and Hit indeed survived but he didn't just survive at a mere coincidence in fact Hit actually increased his Toki Tobashi time leap ability to the point where he was able to fully stop Goku and counteract him uh, as he was coming towards him with the God Kamehameha wave and uh, during that portion Goku completely blew a hole within the universal barrier which caused Whis and Vados to seal a patch on him because everyone was beginning to fly on out and uh, as soon as the dust cleared as soon as everyone was settled uh we see goku emerge we see hit emerge hit you know seemed to be unscathed by it. obviously if he was hit by the attack directly i believe at least uh he would have been toast but of course we see goku he's staggering he's groggy he's tired and what's really awesome here is the fact that goku acknowledges the fact that his kaioken ability is starting to wear out whereas in hits getting stronger so the two actually collide once again hit lands these really ferocious ass shots which causes goku to completely lose his super saiyan blue kaioken form and just as we thought it was over, Goku literally pauses right in midair. He gets back in position, he powers up, and he lands a really, really devastating shot to Hit's face, which causes Hit to fly right into the Shampa statue. And speaking of Shampa, Shampa is such a fat ass spoiled cat because during like the whole like sequence of the Command Mail Wave in action, um, and as the dust was settling, we see Shampa in the background. He was trying to like you know maintain his composure, and he stumped his leg on the table, and he was like rolling around, he was crying and bitching. He is one of the most awesome characters as Akira Toyama has ever created. Why? Because he is a fat, spoiled cat, and if he doesn't get it his way, he's gonna bitch, he's gonna moan, he's gonna complain about it, which makes him really that much awesome. So, Hit lands the shots, Goku fires right back up, and the two are extremely tired. Now, we kind of understand here that the Kaoken technique, it does take a lot away from your body. A lot of people were just like, oh no, it actually enhances your abilities. Yeah, sure, it does that, but it also puts a lot of strain on your body, as we saw with Goku. So, the second Goku fired the shot at Hit, they both go, they, they come back down to the ring, and, uh, 
uh, Hit takes the knee. Hit takes the knee because he's tired. Obviously, he's beat up. Um, and obviously, Goku as well. Goku's losing his powers because of the Kaioken ability. Uh, he's not used to the technique, number one. A lot of you guys have to keep that in mind because, again, remember last week, 90 slash 10 survival percentage for Goku to even come out of this alive. So, you know, for Goku to hold his own and take all of the barrage of hits that Hit gave him and then still come back up and power right back up and hit him back was extraordinary. So, we see the two. Obviously, this episode wasn't as action-packed as last week's, but this was the most shocking episode because finally, Goku has come across somebody even stronger than him. You cannot deny that, and, and that's why I firmly believe that a fusion ought to fight this guy because we saw everything Goku did and it still wasn't, you know, uh, effective enough to take him out. I mean, Hit was actually able to improve his Togitobashi technique once again during the fight between, you know, Super Saiyan God, Kaoken Goku, because he was able to improve once more, and that's what Hit does. He gradually improves while he's fighting, and Goku wanted the rules changed. Goku wanted Hit to implement, uh, you know, all of his all of his death abilities because Hit wasn't able to go all out because he's limited by the killing factor. If if by some chance the killing factor were not to be implemented in this tournament, then we would see Hit go all out. Then we would see what truly Hit possesses in his arsenal because Hit again, guys, Hit is holding back because he's an assassin. He's a hitman. He's not really a fighter of of, of tradition. He's not an honorable fighter to the point where he wants to fight you to test himself. He wants to fight and kill people just for the simple fact that he's there to kill people. He's a hired gun. So, Goku wants the rules changed. Shampa's like, yes, do that. That way I can see you die. And Beerus is against that, which is kind of funny because when was Beerus ever against, you know, holding back the rules? He was just like, no, keep the rules the way they are. And that's why Shampa and Beerus were clashing. And, th and this is why I love these two so much because you have one skinny cat, you have one fat cat, and they're arguing over rules. They're arguing over food. And they were at each other's throats. They were choking each other and whatnot. And during all that, we see Goku and Hit talking. And at that given point right there, Goku decided enough is enough. And he he once again, guys, reminiscent of the Cell Saga, he quit technically. Uh, he went out and he got himself eliminated. Why in the world Goku did that is is unreasonable, unknown. Uh, whether or not he was tired or not, he, the, the fact that he still went out of his way to get himself eliminated what was what shocked the entire community because well, like, how many of us actually believed that this dude was going to go on ahead and eliminate himself? We all thought, all right, well, you know, either Hit's going to eliminate him, it's going to be a draw, and in fact, it did come down to a draw because towards the end, which I which I find really funny here because all the Monaka fans are going to go crazy, Monaka actually technically beat Hit, guys. I am not joking. I'm not playing around. This is not a rib. This is not fake. Monaka beat Hit. Would you like to know why? Well, my fellow friends, when Monaka stepped in, first of all, he did a somersault in the ring, and prior to that, he was scared out of his mind. He was trembling in fear. Do you really blame him? Not really. So he did a somersault in the ring. He landed right on his head, and everyone's looking at him like, this guy is a fool. And Shampa knew right off the bat. He's like, that's it. We won. He's going to ring the bell, and then that's that, right? Or at least that's what we presumed. Um, but, the, but the minute, you know, Monaka stepped in there, and Hit was looking at him, Hit was like, I can't really take this guy serious. I, I can mop the floor with him. I mean, it, it's kind of insulting to him, because how do you go from fighting Goku, uh, someone who was able to push you to your max and, and gradually make you improve, to someone like Monaka? So what happened was Monaka threw the first punch and he, he pretty much hit him um, towards like, you know, his his leg area, like his abdominal region, somewhere around there. And Hit was standing there. He was looking right at him and he was like, are you serious? And everyone was like shocked as to what happened because nobody really expected Monaka to, to actually throw the first punch. And the minute he did that, right, I swear to God, professional wrestling comes into Dragon Ball once again. Hulk Hogan Diesel, Hulk Hogan Kevin Nash. What happened here was they did the one finger poke of doom instead of it being a finger, it was a punch. Monaka punched Hit, and Hit actually lied. He faked his uh, his elimination, but why? Because Hit knew right off the bat he was a pawn to the system. He was a pawn to Shampa and Beerus, and he didn't really care no more, so he caused himself to be eliminated. Everybody was shocked. Shampa was pissed. Beerus was shocked. I mean, obviously, he was happy. Monaka, being the puny little pencil Nick pipsqueak that he was, he was shocked as well, uh, Hit goes flying into the barrier, he crashes right back down, the Universal God of Destruction tournament is over, with Monaka being your winner, how do you guys feel about that, because, I mean, we had Vegeta knock motherfuckers out, right, but then you have Monaka win the tournament, people are gonna be pissed, um, and then, that's when things really got interesting, Shampa wanted to kill everybody on his team, he was pissed, he felt embarrassed, he was like, you know what, the hell with this whole Super Saiyan God business, the hell with the 
this whole Toki Tobashi timely business. I am the god of destruction. I am the ruler of my own universe. I am the sole proprietor of your destinies. And Kabe tried to stop him. Everybody, everyone was scared. Botamo, I swear to God, guys, pay attention to Frost. Is it just me or is Frost dead? Somebody please comment down below because he looked out of his mind. I could have swore I saw flies around his head. Go back and watch the episode, guys. Take a look at Frost. I swear to Jesus Christ, this guy must be dead on that couch because he did not move ever since he encountered Hit. So everyone was scared. Shampa wanted to kill his own team. Goku wanted to interfere, and obviously Goku wanted to be the hero. Beerus is like, no, stop right there. Do not interfere because that is not your business. It is not your universe. Whatever happens and whatever is dictated in that universe stays within that universe. That's Shampa's business. That's Shampa's universe. Do not interfere. And during that, I really thought Shampa was going to do something until Varus kept asking Shampa. She was like, Shampa sama, Shampa sama, Shampa sama, Shampa sama. And, and he completely ignored her. He, he wanted to unleash those energy attacks and kill everybody. And, and Varus was, Varus kept telling him, she was like, Shampa sama, Shampa sama. And then finally, Shampa's like, what? What do you want? And then she said, look. And then as he looked in the ring, he saw something that put complete and utter fear inside of him, alongside Beerus as well, because Whis, while Beerus was relaxing, picking his ears and picking out his, his nails, Whis was like, uh, Beerus? Beerus sama? Beerus? And then, you know, Beerus was like, what? And then Whis goes, look in the ring. And who's in the ring, guys? The Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, the governor of all 12 universes, Zeno, with his two guards. I broke the news earlier today, guys. Uh, I, I made a video about, you know, who's, who, who the Zenos are and what they're there for. And the Zenos are said to be, according to Kazenshu, the gods and the overseers of all 12 universes. And there he was, this little pipsqueak in the ring. He was there, and Beerus and Shampa shit their pants out of fear. I mean, why are they so scared of him? We don't know. Perhaps maybe this one little being is the be-all, end-all, pinnacle of all power. Uh, perhaps maybe like this little you know creature has a power that nobody could ever come close to reaching ever. Perhaps maybe that little entity right there is the be-all, end-all, proprietor of power. So towards the end, it cuts off right there, and now we find out who is the one that calms Shampa down. And towards the end, guys, we get to see Zorama, uh, the, uh, the god of the dragons, Zorama, Zorama, however it is you want to call him, uh, the god of all dragons appear towards the end, and is it just me, or does the uh, dragon god look a lot like the wind dragon of Raw? Because that's exactly what it looked like. Honestly, guys, it looked really cool, don't get me wrong, um, but towards the end of that, like, what I really, what I really enjoyed about this episode was the fact that, you know, uh, like, last week's episode like, was, like, like really action-packed. Um, this episode, however, it wasn't as action-packed, but it told that story, because Hit, Hit finally came to the understanding that he did not need this tournament, and he told Shampa, he's like, you know what, forget this, take me home, I'm done, because he knew right off the bat what, like, what the whole deal was about, and Shampa was like, no, bitch, not before I fucking wipe your ass out, and he was gonna do that until the Zeno appeared in the ring, and of course, leading into next week's episode, guys, we don't have, we have no idea what's gonna happen, but what we do understand is the fact that they will call upon the God of the Dragons, which I am getting chills right now talking about, because honestly, guys, comment down below, like, who here got a boner after watching this, because that was one of the most intense moments, I, I think, ever, because just on the simple fact alone that, you know, Zorama appears, the Zeno up here, it, it just made for great content. So comment down below, guys, on your overall thoughts and opinions as to what's going to happen next week, and comment your, your overall thoughts on both Goku and Hit throwing the fight. What are your overall thoughts as to them actually, um, you know, forfeiting technically and not, you know, caring as much about this tournament? Comment down below and let me know, guys. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you guys are Dragon Ball fans, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way, you guys, don't miss a single Dragon Ball update. If you guys enjoyed, if you guys cannot wait for next week's episode, smash that like button if you guys are Dragon Ball fans. If you guys are a bunch of lemons don't like it at all um hey if, if you guys have something to say about this uh this overall episode comment down below thank you all for watching guys once again tune in for more lots of more updates and community reactions is coming so comment down below that way i can make uh, a community reaction video based on your comments as i always do because i want to be able to get what i like, understand what you guys are coming from and what, what your overall thoughts and opinions are so once again guys thank you all for watching tune in for the next update and i'll be seeing you all later take it easy guys peace